I started covering college football on YouTube back in 2020, and it's hard to believe that the guys who were freshmen during that season are now either in the NFL or towards the tail end of their careers. There were a ton of big names in the class of 2020, and today I wanted to spotlight what happened to the top 10 recruits. We're going to be using the top 24-7 recruits, not the composite, and we're going to go through each and every single player ranked inside the top 10, talk about who they are, where they ended up, how they did in college, and where they ended up now. But before we get started, if you're a big fan of college football, be sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like if you want to support today's video, and let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I can cover next. Now let's get started and talk about what happened to the top 10 recruits from 2020. While we're not going to go in depth, I want to quickly talk about some of the other five stars who were in this class. B. John Robinson ended up at Texas and is a star in the NFL. Michael Mayer became an insane tight end for Notre Dame and is also currently in the NFL. You had guys like Eli Ricks and Demarcus Bowman completely flame out. You had superstar receiver Jackson Smith and Jigba. Drew Sanders saved his five-star career after going from Alabama to Arkansas. And then finally, you had Justin Flo, who started out as a bust, but ended up at Arizona, and he's done decent since then. And number 10, though, we have one of the best tight end prospects of all time, and he was considered an absolute cheat code, and his name is Arik Gilbert. Arik Gilbert comes out of Marietta High School in Marietta, Georgia, and he really, really was considered something special. He obviously comes in at number 10 on this list, and he ended up having an insane high school career, as which in total he had 247 catches for 3,640 yards and 35 touchdowns. He was also a pass rusher for Marietta and was the number one tight end in the class of 2020. The Gatorade Player of the Year decided to sign with LSU coming out of high school and ended up having a tremendous freshman season in which he actually caught 35 passes for 368 yards and two total touchdowns. Gilbert had a great year, but he would decide to change things up going into 2021. Gilbert would decide to commit to Florida and Dan Mullen, but then out of nowhere, he would then transfer back to Georgia. He was considered a preseason All-American going into 2021, but would never get an opportunity to play. In 2022, he barely played as he was stuck behind Brock Bowers and Darnell Washington, and then he made his final move going over to Nebraska, where things really fell apart. He ended up having a lot of legal issues while he was there, as he was arrested for burglary of a liquor and vape store in Lincoln, and then was arrested for a second time and another burglary, this time back in Georgia. Arik Gilbert will get a video on this channel one day, as he's one of the best tight end recruits of all time, and ended up flaming out at technically four different programs. It's really sad to see, though, what happened to him. And number nine, we have Jalen Carter. Carter ended up coming out of Apopka, Florida, and ended up blossoming into a blue chip recruit. At 6'3 and over 300 pounds, Jalen Carter was a dominant force and ended up having 12 sacks, 64 tackles, and a touchdown while he was a senior in high school. Eventually, he decided to commit to the Georgia Bulldogs, and this was a massive get for Kirby Smart. He wanted to build upon both the offensive and defensive lines, and Carter would end up playing in a couple games as a true freshman, totaling 14 tackles. In 2021, Carter would once again get better, as this time he had 37 tackles, one pass deflection, and three sacks. In 2022, Carter was seen as one of the best players in college football, as he ended up finishing with 32 tackles, three pass deflections, three sacks, and two forced fumbles. Just like Arik Gilbert, he'd end up getting in a little bit of legal trouble, as in January before the 2023 NFL Draft, he got in some trouble driving on the streets like a lot of Georgia players seemingly have been, and ultimately it ended up costing his draft stock a little bit as he fell to pick number 9 in the first round instead of going maybe in the top 3. In Carter's first season with the Eagles, he finished with 33 tackles, 6 sacks, and 2 forced fumbles, and so far this year in 3 games he has 8 total tackles, but has yet to register a sack or a forced fumble yet. So far Carter has been solid, and definitely lived up to his number 9 overall ranking. And number 8, we had the top offensive lineman in the 2020 class, and his name was Paris Johnson Jr. Paris Johnson Jr. was born in July of 2001 and would eventually attend the famous St. X High School before then transferring to Princeton High School in 2019. He ended up winning the award for the best offensive lineman in all of college football, was an Army All-American, and he got a lot of that from his dad, who was drafted in the fifth round in 1999 by the Arizona Cardinals. Paris Johnson came from a lineage of NFL talent, and it showed immediately. He'd play in five games as a freshman, and then eventually stepped in during an injury in the 2021 College Football National Championship. In 2021, he started every single game at right guard, and then in 2022, he'd moved to the prestigious left tackle spot, where he became a consensus All-American, and did really well in all the measurables, so was seen as the top offensive lineman in the 2023 NFL Draft. He ended up getting taken with the sixth overall pick in the first round, and just like his father, he'd go to the Arizona Cardinals. This was kind of special, and as a rookie, he started in all 17 games, and so far, things have looked pretty good for him. There's always one big offensive lineman every single year, and Paris Johnson definitely did his job. 
It is that time of the year as winning season is back, football is back, and MyBookie is here to make sure you are ready to cash in on all the action. This season, MyBookie is pulling out all the stops with incredible promotions like a weekly risk-free boost on Thursdays where you can bet without a sweat. If your bet hits, you win big. If it doesn't, forget it. MyBookie will refund your wager. But that's just the beginning. MyBookie is giving away hundreds of thousands in prizes with their Super Survivor and Square contests. Get your entries now and for your shot at huge cash rewards. When you're ready to get started, be sure to use my promo code FISHER50 and make sure to get some extra cash on top of your first deposit. Okay, but what do you get when you use my promo code? Well, if you type in FISHER50, you'll get up to $1,000 in a welcome bonus bet plus a $10 casino chip. MyBookie's tiered bonuses make it easy to deposit with crypto or with credit, and the bigger your deposit, the bigger your bonus. The bonus would be 100% match up to $1,000 plus a $10 casino chip. With MyBookie, you can bet on anything, anywhere, at any time, and make your season a winning season. Be sure to check out my link down below and use my promo code FISHER50. That is F-I-S-H-E-R-5-0. And number seven, we had the top corner in the class of 2020, and that was Keely Ringo. Ringo ended up growing up in Scottsdale, Arizona, and eventually went to Saguaro High School, where he became one of the top athletes in all of high school football. At one point, I believe he was a top three recruit, and every single school in the country wanted him. Why was that? Well, he had a really crazy high school career, as during his senior season, he had 32 tackles, 4 TFLs, 3 pass breakups, and 3 picks, and also ran for 700 yards and 13 touchdowns as the team's backup running back. Ringo would decide to commit to play for Kirby Smart at Georgia, and in total in 2020, he would redshirt as he recovered from an offseason injury. Going into 2021, he'd end up making the freshman All-SEC team as he looked the par right away. He started the final 12 contest for the Georgia Bulldogs and had 34 tackles, 8 pass breakups, and 2 interceptions. His biggest moment would come in the national championship game as he had that pick 6 on Bryce Young and this punched Georgia's national championship ticket. Ringo was a huge deal and was considered a top 5 pick going into 2022, but unfortunately he would fall off a little bit. He only ended up making the SEC all second team and while he did start in all 15 games, he only ended up having 42 total tackles that season to go along with 7 pass deflections. I'm honestly not sure why his draft stock fell that much, but he was eventually taken in the fourth round with the 105th overall pick by the Philadelphia Eagles, and so far things have also looked pretty solid for Ringo. He played in 17 games last year, finishing with 21 total tackles, a sack, and an interception. So far he's played in three games this year at the Eagles, and while he will need to show his worth here soon, he should have a little bit of time, and I think he will get better throughout the season. While Ringo may not have gone the first round, he definitely had a memorable career at Georgia, and made arguably a bigger play than anyone else on this list did. At number 6, we had Jervon Dexter. Coming out of Lake Wales, Florida, Dexter ended up putting up ridiculous numbers while he was in high school, and his physical measurements had him destined to become a 5-star recruit. He ended up having 103 tackles and 18 sacks during his senior season, and also forced 7 fumbles. He was seen as one of the best prospects in the class of 2022, obviously, and he was one of those defensive linemen that there are only so many of. He decided to stay home and commit to play for the Florida Gators, and Dexter ended up having a really solid career there. As a freshman, he finished with 19 tackles and even had an interception, and then in 2021, he got a little bit better. He increased his number to 50 tackles with one pass deflection and two and a half sacks, and then in 2022, he also had 55 tackles with one pass deflection and two sacks. Javon Dexter ended up having a great career with the Gators, and was also known for having an interesting NIL deal. He apparently signed an NIL deal with Big League Advance Fund, and this would require him to pay 15% of his pre-tax NFL earnings for the next 25 years in exchange for a nearly $450,000 payment. He eventually sued BLA in 2023 and said that it went against Florida's NIL law. It was definitely an interesting situation, but Dexter ended up getting taken in the second round with the 53rd overall pick by the Chicago Bears. In his first season with Chicago, he ended up playing in 17 games, finishing with 20 tackles and also had two pass deflections. So far through three games in 2024, he already has 10 tackles and he has two sacks. It looks like Dexter could be a future bright star in the league, and he definitely panned out to his five-star pedigree. And number five, we have Will Anderson. For a little while coming out of high school, Will Anderson Jr. was just a four-star recruit. He ended up going to Dutchtown, which was located in Hampton, Georgia, and eventually blossomed into one of the top players in high school football. As a senior, Anderson went nuts. He had 22 sacks and 15 TFLs and was an unstoppable force. Because of that, he went from your average four-star to a guy who was considered a top-five recruit and eventually picked Bama over Auburn, LSU, and Tennessee and had over 40 total offers. 
Anderson would become a star right away for the Crimson Tide, as in his first season with the Tide, he ended up finishing with 52 tackles, 7 sacks, and 1 forced fumble. Will Anderson was seen as the next big thing, and in 2021, he was absurd. He ended up finishing with 101 tackles, 3 pass deflections, 17 and a half sacks, and also became a first-team All-American. Combined with Dallas Turner in 2022, Anderson's numbers went down a bit as he had 51 tackles and 10 sacks, but he was still a dominant force and ended up getting taken with the third overall pick in the first round by the Houston Texans. So far, Anderson has been really solid with the Texans, as in 2023, he finished with 45 tackles, 7 sacks, and 1 pass deflection, and so far in 2024, he has 8 tackles through 3 games and also has 2.5 sacks. Will Anderson definitely lived up to his 5-star status and is still doing big things and will for quite some time. Sadly, not every player can be a star, and at number 4 we had Julian Fleming. He ended up going to South Columbia Area High School, which was located in Pennsylvania, and Fleming would definitely blossom into the number one receiver in the class of 2020. He ended up becoming a finalist for the Gatorade National Player of the Year and would finish with 72 catches for 1,500 yards and 22 touchdowns as a senior. He became the state's career leader in touchdowns, receiving yards, and receptions, and Fleming was a top five recruit who chose to go to Ohio State and Brian Hartline. Fleming would arrive in 2021, and in his first season, he caught seven passes for 74 yards. In 2021, he took a slight step up, catching 12 passes for 86 yards in his first career touchdown, and then his best season would come in 2022. In that year, he ended up catching 34 passes for 533 yards and six scores, and Fleming could have declared for the draft and been a later end pick. Instead, he decided to come back for one more season, and alongside Marvin Harrison Jr., Fleming would finish with 26 catches for 270 yards and failed to register a single touchdown. He decided to enter the 2024 transfer portal, where he settled on Penn State. So far, he's pretty much gotten no targets, as through three games, he has three receptions for 63 yards. Unfortunately, it looks like Fleming should have declared after 2022, and unless something drastic changes here in the next couple months, Fleming will likely go undrafted or maybe not even get a chance in the NFL. He'll definitely get a video of his own here at some point, and it's really sad to see what happened to him. At number three, we had a mammoth of a recruit in Brian Brissy. I remember at one point he was considered the top player in the class of 2020, as you could just not teach his physical traits. Brissy ended up going to the infamous Damascus High School and helped them win state championships in both 2017 and 2019. Before his junior season, he was considered the top player in the class of 2020 and got offers from every single school in the country. At over six foot five and 300 pounds, he was a lineman who was not going to be able to be stopped, and every school in the country wanted him. He eventually picked Clemson over Penn State, Alabama, Georgia, and Ohio State, and this was a massive get for Dabo Sweeney. He started every single game as a true freshman in 2020, but would not have a perfect career by any means. He finished with 23 tackles and 2 pass deflections and 4 sacks his freshman season, before he ended up having a disappointing 2021 season in which he had 13 tackles and 1.5 and sacks. He was only limited to 4 games that season because of an injury, and this was tough. In 2022, he came back for pretty much the entire season, but he was dealing with some very difficult tragedy behind the scenes. His sister unfortunately had cancer and would end up passing away, and this was a very sad and emotional moment. He would have a big game against Wake Forest though, and they were famously showing his parents practically the whole game, and it was cool to see him get a win and honor his sister. As a senior, he finished with 15 tackles and 3.5 and sacks, but because of his physical traits, he was always seen as a first rounder. He ended up being taken with the 29th overall pick in the first round by the New Orleans Saints in 2023, and so far, he's been alright for them. Brissy would finish with 24 tackles and 4.5 and sacks as a rookie, and then so far this year, he's off to a dominant start. In just three games, he already has three sacks and a forced fumble, and Brissy is living up to his five-star status. The top two recruits in the class of 2020 were both quarterbacks who I've talked about relentlessly on this channel. The first one was DJ Uyangalale at number two. Coming out of St. John Bosco High School, DJ was seen as the guy with the perfect arm and, and perfect physical measurables to be a future NFL stud. As a junior, he threw for over 3,000 yards and 48 touchdowns, and as a senior, he got even better, throwing for over 4,000 yards and 48 scores. He was an absolute superstar for Bosco, and eventually chose to go to Clemson over Oregon, where many thought he would end up going. DJ would back up Trevor Lawrence in 2020, but had his one start against Notre Dame, in which he put up over 500 yards and looked like the future of the program. As he would take over in 2021, though, there were a lot of growing pains. After an early season loss to NC State, we saw that DJ was not quite right and ended up throwing for 2,246 yards with 9 touchdowns and 10 picks. It was extremely disappointing, but maybe he'd bounce back in 2022. Well, he did kind of. He threw for 2,500 yards with 22 touchdowns and 7 interceptions, but he honestly didn't look that much better. In 2023, he would decide to transfer to Oregon State as the Tigers had Cade Klubnik, and this was his best season to date. 
He ended up finishing with 2,638 yards, 21 touchdowns, and 7 picks, and also ran for 6 more scores on the ground. It looked like he could have maybe done one more year with the Beavers, but because they were relegated to the group of 5, he decided to transfer to Florida State, and that was a big mistake. The Seminoles lost their whole offensive line, their stud receiving core, and DJ did not get put in the right system, as so far through 4 games, he has thrown for 843 yards with 2 touchdowns and 3 picks, and has been famously clowned upon pretty much the entire year for looking absolutely terrible. It's safe to say that DJ has not lived up to the hype, and while there is technically still time for him to save it all, I think he will end up going down as a bust. At number one, we have Bryce Young. Bryce Young was seen as the next big thing coming out of Southern California and would eventually arrive at Modern Day High School, where he was the successor to JT Daniels. As a senior, he threw for a whopping 4,528 yards and 58 touchdowns, and after originally committing to USC, he would flip to play for Nick Saban in Alabama. As a freshman in 2020, he would end up backing up Mac Jones, but still got an opportunity to see some time on the playing field, as he would throw for 156 yards and a touchdown. In 2021, he would take over as the starter, throwing for a Bama record 4,872 yards with 47 touchdowns. He'd end up winning the Heisman Trophy and got them all the way to the national championship game. With high expectations in 2022, Bryce would be a little bit worse. He threw for 3,328 yards with 32 touchdowns, and Bama was just not the same as they were the year prior, and Bryce Young was still somehow the number one overall pick. The Panthers decided to take him instead of CJ Stroud, and Bryce Young went to a messy franchise, and so far he has looked awful. The best moment of his rookie season came in a win over the Texans, but other than that, it was pretty bad, as he threw for 2,877 yards with 11 touchdowns and 10 interceptions. Through two games in 2024, Bryce Young looked even worse as he threw for 245 yards without a touchdown and three picks. He was benched in favor of Andy Dalton, and Bryce Young looks like he could be one of the biggest busts for number one overall pick of all time. Who's the blame though, him or the franchise? That's a question that a lot of people are asking right now, but we'll just have to wait and see what happens with him. So yeah, today we talked about the top 10 recruits from 2020 and where they are now. The two quarterbacks both ended up being bust in the long run. The defensive linemen like Brian Brissy, Will Anderson, Jervon Dexter, and Jalen Carter all ended up being great. The two skill players in Arik Gilbert and Julian Fleming were busts, and then the one great offensive lineman hit, and then Keely Ringo also hit. It was definitely an interesting top 10, and I've been hearing about these guys for quite some time, and I hope you guys did enjoy today's video. If you did, be sure to leave a like if you want to support it. Let me know what topic, class, or team I could do next. And before you go, don't forget to also check out all my other videos on the end screen, including my video about LSU's 2019 class. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.